Hi, we're going to check out and do a teardown of a whiteboard. Yes, a whiteboard. Stick with me. Thank you very much to Jan De Plume who uh, said, hey, I'm going to send something uh, cool to your office. I had no idea what it was and it, <laughs> a whiteboard turns up. Apparently uh, Jan wasn't happy with uh, the quality of the whiteboards I was using in my videos and said, hey, like, here's a much better whiteboard. So let's check it out. It's called the Justic and well, it's a whiteboard. It's white, but it's got this extra um, flappy thing on it, and that's what you uh, draw on the, you know, like a, it's, I don't know, is it a Lexan or some other, you know, plastic uh, type sheet that is the surface instead of your more traditional whiteboard surface underneath. And it's designed so that you can actually put things underneath like this and then put them over the top and then draw over the top of that. And, you know, that's pretty cool, but the problem with that is, what? It just falls down like that. So obviously that's no good. These things are permanently mounted on walls. So how do you get stuff to stick when, you know, to use this uh, cool feature of being able to write on top of stuff? Well, this is one of these newfangled electrostatic or electro-adhesive whiteboards and it's battery powered. So it takes four AA batteries. Let's whack some batteries in, see what it does. We'll put the last battery in here and Ta-da! Put it on there, and I'm having a hard time pulling down on that. It's electrostatically stuck. Don't get hair stuck on this thing. It tastes... Am I losing my hair? Anyway, um, yeah, you just whack things in there and they electrostatically stick like that. And it actually requires quite a significant amount of force to actually pull that down so you can whack your things in there, you can draw on top. So I'm, uh, this is really cool. I'll probably uh, you know, use it for my whiteboard tutorial videos. I might get some, like, I'm not sure of the exact size of this. Um, is it like A0? So I might get some paper that I can stick inside of it, draw my circuits on or whatever it is I'm talking about. And then I can actually go over the top without ruining the original one. So uh, that's the intention anyway. And that's, that's pretty cool. Electrostatic whiteboard. So, Let's check out how this thing works. So yep, I can now ca oh, really having a hard time budging that. So that's fantastic. We can stick our stuff in there. No whackers. Stick our stuff in there. Bob's your uncle. Draw on top. Beauty. So how does this voodoo work? Well, it all has to do with electrostatics and what's called the Coulomb force. So, or the Coulombic force. Is that a word? It is now. The Coulombic force between two charges. So any two charged particles are actually going to have a force. If you've got a positively charged particle Q1 here, well, it's going to be attracted to the negatively charged Q2. And if they're both positive, they'll repel. If they're both negative, they'll repel. But if positive and negative, boop, they'll attract. And you're familiar with this in everyday life. It's why this synthetic top is actually clinging to me. I can feel the static charge on me. It's electrostatics that actually forces uh, these together. It's how electrostatic speakers work. It's how a ton of stuff in both engineering and nature actually works. And yes, if you've got a capacitor, two charged plates, there'll actually be a force between them. I'll leave that uh, for you at home to calculate the force between two plates on a capacitor, but I won't go into details, but basically Coulomb force equation is our force in Newtons is equal to the Coulomb force constants, just this magic constant. It's roughly nine times 10 to the nine and multiplied by the charge in Coulombs, because uh, that's the unit of uh, charge of, of any charge particle in Coulombs. Uh, Q1 times the charge in Q2 over this R squared here. Now this is like a radius of separation. You can think of it as just a distance. It's not actually meters as such, but it, it gets more complicated than this. The theory behind all this, the physics behind it all can get really complicated if you want to go down that rabbit hole. But suffice it to say, it drops with a square of the distance. So if you have these two charged particles this distance apart, if you double that distance, uh, the force drops by a quarter. So it's just proportional to the distance between them. And that's all there is. So this is how this electrostatic board works. But how does, like, okay, this thing that we're going to stick on here, this may be neutrally 
See, this may not have a charge. So, like, we, we can have one surface that's charged up, but how do we get the charge on the other one? Well, let's take a look at this thing physically, how it works. And in case you're wondering, does it only work with paper? No, it should work with pretty much anything, really. Um, take some owl foil. That's what we call it here, owl foil. No worries. And that is, like, that sticks beautifully. Like, I, I try and pull on that, and that uh, requires a lot of force to pull that off. If you get some uh, parchment baking um, uh, paper, for example, that one sticks quite nicely. No worries whatsoever. Not as... Not as effectively as the owl foil, but still works. Right, so what I've done is disconnected uh, the battery here. We're going to use our surface DC voltmeter that you've seen before in the uh, wireless anti-static myth-busting uh, episode, which I might have to link in at the end. Um, it's very interesting. So we'll just reset that. I've got it an inch away, which is um, its calibrated distance. Uh, so it's a kilovolt um, at, for a one inch. There's like a metal plate on the back and I've got it uh, grounded, this ground lead coming out here uh, just to my um, mains earth anti-static uh, bench mat. It's going to jump around. We've got some stray static in the air. So let's plug that in, see what happens. There we go. It's gone up. It's charging up. It's charging up. Yep, it's going up, minus, and of course it's negative, it could be positive or negative, depending on uh, just the polarity of the charges, and we've got, getting, it's climbing up, to upwards to two and a half kilovolts, so maybe it, like, it takes some time to charge up the surface, perhaps, maybe the internal um, uh, high, oh no, the high voltage generator should turn on pretty sweet, so I don't think that's an issue. And if we just disconnect the battery like that, you see it's just going to drain eventually back down. Maybe if I touch it, like I'm, I'm holding on to the anti-static bench mat at the moment. Yep, there we go. We can drain that surface down pretty quick. Sweet. But if we plug it back in, well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's jumping around. And if I touch it, oh no, touching does actually... Loading that down does make a difference, doesn't it? It takes charge, time to charge back up. If I just put the paper on, let's have a look. Yep, yep, <laughs> because that it takes energy, of course, to pull, you know, forces are happening there, stuff's happening, so it's obviously draining away the charge on that thing. Yeah, yeah, it's still going to build up once that's on there, but if we pull it, let's say if we just slowly pull it to the side, ah, uh, oh, no, nah, couldn't do it. And we'll try our alfoil. Womp. <laughs> Thank you very much, but it'll slowly charge back up. There you go. So something on the surface of this thing is charging up. Let's take a look at the surface. Now, if we get the light on an angle like this, you can see clearly they've got two contacts on here and then they've obviously got like a big printed I don't know is it done as a big copper sheet I'm not sure how they you know an adhesive back sheet or or something like that then with the white uh, layer on top anyway um, one of the terminals goes into this side of the pattern here and you can see how the pattern is split into two halves there's like a four or five millimeter gap between these and it wiggle 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 yeah like that in there and the other terminal goes along here and this one actually goes all the way along and I'm sure there we go it goes up here and connects into the other side of that and it does exactly the same thing up here like this. So it's basically um, all these rows are in uh, parallel. So then you basically got a, you know, a two plate capacitor effectively across here like this, just with this gap. And then when you place the medium on top, it actually uh, creates a more efficient path across here. And then you get the electrostatic adhesion, uh, which is basically, I'm not sure if it's the right word that it's conducted through the medium. So this is where the terminology gets a bit tricky because it's not actually conducting as such. It's an electrostatic 
force, so there's not actually, in theory, there's no current flow. Of course, we're going to have leakage and all the rest of it. Um, but, you know, and of course, we're going to have capacitive charge, so there is, you know, some electron flow onto the plates and things like that. I've done the infamous video of does current flow through a capacitor? Yeah, depends on the way you look at it. Um, so, yeah, but basically we've got, think of it as a capacitor and then uh, the material actually becomes sort of like the dielectric between them, I guess, and that, uh, and then that's involved in the attractive force between them. So, I don't know, any physicists out there want to correct my terminology, by all means. So it's very cool. Anyway, I want to crack this open. Yeah, you can uh, power it from an external uh, plug, pa plug pack if you want. There we go, draws one milliamp, so they reckon about nine months battery life, so yeah, like for a, say, a nominal 3,000 uh, milliamp hour capacity, you're going to get 3,000 hours use out of it, roughly, so anyway, let's take the screws off, see what's what. Uh-huh, couple of wires coming out, and that's all she wrote, so we're just going to, it's not going to be hugely exciting, we're just going to have a high voltage generator in there, see if I can crack it open. Well, it's not much. Come on. I'll get it out for you. Well, I expected a Cockcroft Walton voltage multiplier. I've done a video on that. I'll have to link it in at the end. And that's what it looks like we've got. There we go. We've got the diode capacitor arrangement going across. And, of course, we've got a little switch in MOSFET there. Little inductor and a uh, little driver down the bottom. Is that, that'd be like the low, is that the low voltage? <laughs> Got a low voltage indicator. That's what the LED's for, by the way. Yeah, not much to it at all. It's exactly what you expect. Just generates a high voltage. Let's measure it. And I'll tell you what, nice attention to detail. You can see that is conformally coded. Sweet, although you'd expect that on a high voltage uh, multiplier like this. So yeah, you don't want moisture and crap getting on the board, upsetting the apple cart. And it's time to bring out the bad boy, the triplet 630. Fantastic. Got a 6,000 volt DC and AC range. So hopefully it shouldn't be more than 6,000 volts. So let's whack it up to this and uh, see what we get. And I was afraid of that. The uh, triplet is too much load for this thing because it's a little piss ant circuitry. You know, it just can't drive anything. So let's get our... Uh, surface DC voltmeter here and we'll put that about an inch away over one lead maybe we can get a differential uh, yeah I'm just eyeballing that let's let's call that a kilovolt positive kilovolt move it to the other side tongue at the right angle eyeball it again you know minus a kilovolt so you're talking you know like a two kilovolt uh, differential on there so that's because uh, what we were measuring before wasn't the actual um, like on the uh, surface wasn't actually the like the differential output across this so there you go it's you know roughly in the order of a couple of kilovolts and that's what I would have expected just a closer look at the chippies on that board for those interested so there you have it that's the Justic electroadhesive electrostatic colomic force whiteboard whatever you want to call it it's pretty cool it actually does work apparently they have a patent on this thing but a quick search couldn't find it if i do i'll link it in but yeah it's just a, the two plates spread over the surface and that's it there you put your thing on top it becomes the medium uh between those two and it it hears down and there's quite a lot of force on this thing so I'm actually reasonably impressed by this it works really well a decent amount of battery life on it so it's not too shabby at all so I think I'll use this for my whiteboard uh, tutorials let me know what you think about maybe doing some I don't know how I can utilize this let me know and once again sorry about the quality of this video the lights proper lights still aren't installed or anything like that here in the new lab so Eh, I kind of get what I get. So anyway, hope you liked it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.